In this session, we're going to cover a very interesting framework called Innovation Matrix, which is inspired by Mapping Innovation by Greg Sattel, which is a great book. And we had uh, Greg Sattel explaining on 4 Week MBA how the Innovation Matrix works. We're going to use this matrix to actually frame the, the, the problem of technological innovation. And before we move forward, it's very important to actually distinguish between uh, technical innovation and business innovation. Well, the first one is really about uh, bringing new technologies to, to uh, the development stage and then be able at least to bring to market. Business innovation is a much more about how to bring them to market, but also how to scale them up. So it's much more about the combination of product development and distribution together to scale things up. Instead here, when it comes to technical innovation, we want to look at what aspects um, you know, can help us understand the main types of technical innovation and thereafter actually, actually how to bring them to market. Now, if you look at the innovation matrix, you see that this uh, is defined according to um, two domains. One is problem definition and the other side is domain definition. When it comes to problem definition, actually the main aspect here, here is to understand whether we uh, do have such a definition of the problem so that we can specify the technical requirements uh, to uh, solve that problem. On the other side, when it comes to domain definition is uh, do we know actually who is the person or who are the people or what are the skills that we can use to actually solve this technical problem? In other words, are we able to hire uh, or at least describe the job that those people uh, who will be working on this domain will need uh, to, to have in order to solve this specific problem? Now, when those two actually problem and domain are not well defined, so we are here in what's called basic research. So basic research is everything that usually happens in the academia or in labs. So in all those places where neither the domain nor the problem are well defined. So we are really in a place where it's very hard even to come up with technical specifications because, for instance, the technology is far ahead in the future. And also it's very hard to really even uh, know which skills are needed because the field, the domain that we're building up right now, it's a new one. It's something that is going to be developed in the long term, but it's not something that um, we really know uh, how it works yet. So we are in the domain in the realm of basic research. On the other side, let's imagine the case in which instead the, the, the problem is well defined, but the domain is not well defined. In this case, we are in the, in the really uh, area of breakthrough innovation. The sort of innovation that uh, takes a leap forward and that really, again, here we know what are the technical specification, but really the domain is not yet developed at the point in which we can uh, know for sure what are the skills required to uh, you know, solve that problem. So in this case, we get a breakthrough innovation. In a different scenario, instead, we get uh, you know, a domain which is well-defined and really a problem which is well-defined. That's where sustaining innovation lives. And in many cases, sustaining innovation is done in um, uh, within within companies, within organizations, especially large companies that have wide budgets to keep developing, for instance, let's say a product that um, has already been scaled up uh, to, to a large size of the market. The, the company knows uh, how the, the problem, how to actually uh, frame the problem and knows what kind of people can actually help improve the, the, the definition and actually improve the product on, the, on this market. Take the case, for instance, of a company like Google who keeps improving its uh, search algorithm for its uh, search products. Take the case of a company like Amazon who keeps improving the e-commerce platform or the case of uh, other companies, uh, tech companies, let's say like Netflix who keeps improving the media and technological platform. Those are all cases of sustaining innovation where, again, a company has a wide budget to uh, to invest back uh, into a problem that is already defined into a domain who has been already, um, you know, developing for, for years.
Another case instead if the, is the case of disruptive innovation, where instead the domain is not well defined. Again, it's very hard to define the skills. Uh, actually, sorry, the domain is well defined, so it's uh, it might be easy to find the the skills needed to. To solve a problem but the problem is not yet defined yet so there is a, a lot of ambiguity around the problem and therefore this kind of innovation it's very hard to predict in which direction is going to go uh, because it's even hard to actually understand uh, whether this is going to solve a problem that uh, the, the market cares about in the long run and so what happens is that usually disruptive innovation really comes from the bottom and then takes uh, wider and wider shares of, of, of a market. Now, again, this is uh, one way to look at uh, innovation, to frame it. And uh, we come up with four types of uh, you know, innovation based on whether the problem is defined or the domain is defined. And we have like basic research as done primarily like uh, in, in academia or, for instance, in labs. And we get to the point of sustaining innovation where this is done, especially by mature company who invested and keeps invest, keep investing in, uh, you know, keep growing and not exponentially, but on a, a gradual basis, they core products. And then you get the, the breakthrough innovation, which is uh, well defined in terms of problems that is going to solve. Uh, but uh, yet the domain uh, it's uh, not uh, well defined and then you get disruptive innovation where it's the opposite scenario where we know the kind of skills to solve this problem is just very hard to understand what's the problem in the first place what are the technical requirements which commercial use cases will develop around it and when it does actually uh, it might take over a market very quickly it may be very uh, unpredictable and it usually comes from the bottom